So, the old proverb goes, you get what you pay for. But is that going to be the case with a $900 diet drive base and steering wheel? My name's Gavin Halls. This is Smoking Steel Garage. And today, I'm giving you my review on living with the Symagic M10 and the GT1 wheel long term. Let's get on with it. So initial thoughts when the wheel arrived, it's very well packaged, beautiful boxing, beautiful foam packaging inside, and you're presented with the wheelbase and the wheel in individual boxes and the build quality is sublime. Um, this was one thing I was worried about with the price point we had in mind for this base and, and wheel package. But quality is very high, fit and finish is, is beautiful. Everything bolts together very easily and looks very pleasant on the eye. Installation again is very straightforward. I did make a custom mount um, for this wheel, which you can see on a, a video. I'll put a link up here. Along with the wheel and base, you're also given plenty of hardware for fixings and even some brackets to aid your mounting solution. So installation is very straightforward and it's literally just a case of, of attach the wheelbase to your rig set up your desired position, get yourself comfortable, and then it's just plug and play. So the wheelbase itself requires just plugging in the uh, the power output or the power feed line, and then the USB from the base down to your PC. Then it's just a case of downloading the software from Symagic. Um, if you're downloading from this video onwards, you need to be looking for version four, of the uh, the software as this has ruled out some of the earlier bugs that were found with these uh, wheels when they were fresh on the market the race manager software is very easy to navigate um, a nice simple layout and quite intuitive it does need to be as there is a little bit of, of lack of instructions and, and when you receive the wheel you won't actually receive any instructions or installation procedures in the box with the wheel so it's a case of looking up online so my first feelings um, or my first experience when I was using the wheel, I found it to be really good. Um, I actually stepped up from the uh, G29, so obviously a big performance upgrade for me. I did find initially um, the wheel still had a little bit of notchiness. I was expecting it to be a lot smoother compared to the G29. Um, it was smoother, but just not quite as much as I initially expected. However, I was able to tune some of this notchiness out um, with a bit of work on the race manager software. Overall, the package is very easy to use, very intuitive, um, gives you a good range of settings that you can tweak. You can save profiles for every car or every car, every track, um, whatever you decide. I find it very hard to just set this wheel up in a range that works for any car I jump in. I'd, I'd rather see it a bit simpler so that you're more easily able to get the wheel working um, in a range that you require. I find I'm wasting a lot of time um, with iRacing, racing, messing with settings on the wheel, trying to get it perfect. Also the translations, um, obviously with the software being designed and manufactured in China, there is a translation process to bring it over to English. And this isn't very descriptive. It's the user manual um, that comes with a wheel is quite difficult to understand. It's not clear cut what these settings do. So it becomes more of a trial and error basis with the settings, trying to figure out what they actually do and what difference they make in the feeling of the wheel. And I think that adds to the time that you spend trying to get this wheel dialed in. So the wheel and the wheelbase actually features wireless transmission as well via Bluetooth. So you have a Bluetooth transmitter built into the back of the wheel hub and then a Bluetooth receiver built into the front face or just behind the front face of the base unit. Um, I found this to work quite well. I haven't experienced any reliability problems with this so far. I've done that. So the GT1 steering wheel and base unit is a leather clad 330 mil steering wheel three spokes um, very very nicely made and good to the touch good to the feel the base unit of the wheel features four push buttons one three-way 
multi switch and also a further three-way switch that cannot be tuned this is just a, a mode setting the switch and for making adjustments on the wheel on the fly we also have two rotor encoders which can be used for brake bias and also traction control or anything else that you need to on the rear of the wheel we've got the carbon fiber paddle shifters and also with this wheel i have the feature for the uh, for the clutches so the carbon fiber shifters are somewhat adjustable on the wheel as well and the magnets for the shifters are very strong almost to the point where i'd say a little bit too loud they are extremely noisy and will be picked up on the microphone if you're streaming or youtubing but on the flip side they give you a very good feeling and a very direct um, click as you go into gear so you know when you've engaged your paddles um, i think the feeling is very good on the rear of the hub it also comes fitted from the factory with a quick release this is a ball bearing type release um, and i will say this is one of my most favorite parts of the hub um, very precise very nicely made and um, absolutely no play between the unit and the spline of the uh, direct drive base at all so um, yeah I think credit where credit's due um, I think they've done a very good job with that quick release it gives a very satisfying um, snap as you apply the wheel to the base unit so the rotary encoders fitted to the front of the wheel um, they're not the greatest quality and I think budget was maybe getting a little low when they got to these points there's a little bit of play in the encoders and the click on the movements is not very defined it's rather soft it's hard to feel again if you've got a gloved hand it's very easy to accidentally knock these switches and um, you know knock on a bit of brake bias without realizing you've done it or go to put on one click of brake bias and end up accidentally putting on two or three which can be deadly at some circuits in some cars paddle shifters as well i've battled with these for around six to eight weeks um, in stop location as they were and i got so annoyed with them um, i just had a couple of occurrences where i was missing gears my view on the paddle shifters is they're actually way too small um, for the wheel now if you look at like a porsche gt3 cut wheel in real life you'll they cover a range of the wheel from about uh two o'clock down to say five o'clock so if, wherever you've got your hands placed on the wheel you can locate those paddle shifters the ones on this wheel are very small they're literally um two and a half to three inches long um, it's probably half the size that they need to be and you've also got the clutch paddles very closely located beneath them now the clutch paddles are actually located in a position where the paddle shifters for gear change need to be what i've done to counter this i actually ended up removing the clutch shifters altogether because i'm just not using them at the moment and i've actually flipped the paddle shifters over and i found that to be a lot better still not perfect i still find them too small but they're within my reach now and especially when i've got sort of um, 90 degrees of lock on i can uh, i can still change up and down gears if i need to so i think um some magic or someone needs to look at these paddle shifters and we need a uh, another option for them a larger option and we also need to look at moving the clutch levers down to where they would be on a, a normal racing car which is down between that sort of five and seven o'clock position on the wheel so some other grievances i have with the wheel there's two cap headed bolts on the front and rear covers a lot of people I've seen have been asking in different forums and uh, some posts on my channel as well about whether these can be used as mounting points to mount the unit to the rig. That is an absolute no. Um, having taken the cover plates off and having a good look around inside the base unit, I can tell you that these bolts are purely there for cosmetic reasons. Um, in reality, I think Symagic needs to come up with a better solution. It has been noted that you can actually pull these bolts out just with your fingers some people have just had them fall out over time they're actually very small bolts for the hole that they've been fitted into um, the threads are not the correct size and they have countered this by adding like a silicon or a sealant of some sort um, so yeah 
just to look at them as a, a, a aesthetic um, add-on addition to the wheel. But I think some magic, I think you need, guys, you need to do something about those and uh, maybe rethink your uh, mounting points, those front and rear covers. Um, the freeway programmable mode switch that's fitted to the steering wheel face. Got a horrible red cover around it. It's a stop accidental activate activation. Um, this switch is non impossible to operate in the normal world with, with uh, bare fingers. When you've got gloves on, forget it. You can you cannot get your uh, your fingers in there with gloves on to operate that switch. Now the switch in general, I don't understand why it needs to be a on the steering wheel and be on the base um, right where you could use a button that, that could be programmed for other uses. This button is a uh, a mode selector switch. It's also used for programming of the wheel activation, and you can also adjust. Um, a few other settings on the wheel with it so you can adjust the lighting for the uh the four push buttons you can adjust the force feedback on the wheel on the fly and you can also um, use this switch to adjust the clutch paddles um, operation on the fly and the degree of rotation from the wheel printed onto the front faceplate the wheel has 360 900 540 and 1080 degrees and using this mode switch, you can actually um, operate a feature that will switch the wheel between these four different um, steering ranges. Now, I don't, or well, I've never used this feature. I've never used this mode switch on the fly. And to be able to switch a wheel between these um, four different steering settings, I don't understand why it needs to be there. Have the switch by all means, but put it out the way somewhere else where, where you're not going to see it and replace that switch with another freeway momentary switch that could be used um, in sim racing in, in all the different platforms. This switch is, is just a waste of space. It's an annoyance to me. Um, uh, yeah, I just don't understand why it's there. It's, um, you're running on a tight budget. Why have this feature? Race Manager is really good, easy software to use. Um, and I just keep Race Manager open on my uh, fourth screen and just quickly jump in there and, and dial things backwards and forwards. If I need to make a force feedback change on the fly, I'll actually just do it quickly with my mouse using the black box in iRacing. So I don't understand the features um, and why this switch needs to be on the wheel. So we get on to some of the issues I've encountered um, with the wheel. And this will be quite a long one, unfortunately, but yeah. Um, after unpacking the wheel, I'd only run it for about 20 minutes and I experienced my first problem. And this is, well, some people will tell you this is not a common problem, but I can tell you from research, it is a common problem. After 20 minutes, I lost all connectivity between the wheel base and the uh, steering unit. So no paddle shifters, no buttons whatsoever. It was just a dead duck. I had still had direct drive. I had I could turn the wheel. I had motion. It was picking that up, but no input from the base unit itself. So after a lot of searching, I actually figured or found out and reached out to the Symagic owners page on Facebook, and it turned out to be a software problem. So my retailer had actually sent me um, the version free software. There is actually a version four now, which is out. I uploaded that instead. Had to make a couple of tiny little tweaks on some settings quite deep in the uh, in the race manager file, and that just brought the uh, the buttons and the paddle shifters back to life. Now I can say that after I did this, I haven't experienced that problem again whatsoever. But it did shut me down for about three hours while I tried to figure out what was going on. I ran through all the normal processes of uh, shutting the PC down, restarting it, resetting the wheel, um, trying to um, update software on the base and the wheel, but nothing worked. Um, but it was actually to do with the software, and unfortunately, unbeknown to me, there was a new version out. I think they were trying to counter this problem. And yeah, once that was uploaded and a few minutes of, of messing with settings, we got it back to life and working again. So drama number two actually happened the next day. Um, so I'd, 
The first day I was just messing around, playing around with it, and then on the second day I actually got stuck into it and started doing some, some serious testing and really working on the settings. After about an hour and a half, I noticed there was some play in the uh, in the spline of the steering wheel base unit. So the actual the whole spline that comes out of the base unit, there was getting beginning to be a couple of mil of play. This steadily got worse until it was up to about four or five mil. Um, to the point where I, I decided to switch everything off and I didn't want to do any further damage. Now, I spoke to my supplier, they gave me some advice, but it was already things that I'd already looked at, which was how the uh, the hub um, mounting was fitted to the spline of the base unit. Um, and I'd already decided the problem was inside the base unit. It appeared that the whole motor um, was was moving there was there was a lot of movement there and you could hear something clunking around inside so I reached out to my supplier and this is where it gets very important with Symagic you need to check your supplier is an official Symagic authorized supplier otherwise there is no guarantee and they are very strict on that luckily mine is and he's a very good guy very helpful and I bought my unit and, and steering wheel from Simfei in Asia Spoke with him on the phone, and I, you know, pretty much said, I don't want to have to send this um, base unit back to you. It's going to, you know, it's taken like two, three weeks to get here. I'm going to lose two, three weeks. I've only run the thing for a few hours. So with his blessing, he, uh, he allowed me to take off the front and rear covers of the base unit to see what was going on without invalidating my warranty. And unfortunately, what had happened was, um, so on the Symagic unit, the outer alloy cover that you can see is not actually the cover for the motor the motor unit is a separate unit installed inside that outer base cover now what had happened is by motor unit had actually come loose from its mounting bracket which was causing play in the steering wheel it was great because it was an easy fix it was just a case of tightening up four bolts um, however to have a fault like that from a brand new unit is a little bit worrying what I will say, and what I did point out when I bought this unit, when it arrived, I noticed on the warranty card that the unit was built on, I think it was like the 5th of March. Obviously, they're coming out of China as well. Now, at that point in China, there were much bigger things going on. Um, China were in the midst of a full lockdown um, with the global pande pandemic that was taking place and is currently taking place at the moment. So I believe with my unit being produced at that time, maybe uh, staffing levels at the factory were not great. And I think there was just an oversight at the factory um, on, the, uh, on the quality control. And unfortunately, my unit had left with four bolts that were, were not sufficiently done up. Now, I have been keeping an eye on the Symagic page on Facebook um, with new customers and seeing if any um, any of them experience the same problem as me and I'm, I must say that nobody else has from what I can see experienced the same as me if you have please um, feel free to comment below and let us know but yeah for me it was a it was a fairly easy fix I lost a couple of hours messing around trying to find out what it was but once I tightened those four bolts up that was it it was uh, it was all all rectified and we were back in business again so only two problems you can grade them as quite major problems. I think one is is a, was quite a common occurrence with the old software. Again, I haven't encountered that with the new software. Second one was a quality control issue, um, and I I just believe we kind of got to give out a bit of slack with with the occurrences that were going on in the world at that moment in time. So overall, my verdict on the Symagic M10 and the GT1 wheel, I'm going to give it a seven and a half out of ten. Uh, which I think is quite a high mark. This is based on price, which it is at the bottom of the direct drive wheel market. I think value for money is exceptional, but I also think that there are some performance and uh, some design aspects of the wheel which indicate why the price is so low. So overall, the package is good. It's a great upgrade. The wheel obviously does what it says on the tin. Um, and it will give you a good performance upgrade from a uh, from a gear driven or a belt driven wheel if you're stepping up into that direct drive wheel market. Now, w am I happy with the wheel, and will I look at keeping it long term? I'm undecided at the moment. I am currently looking at a further upgrade option to a proper direct drive wheel base unit. 
um, but obviously price is keeping me out of that range. So I think in the near future there will be an upgrade and the Simagic is just a stepping stone into the diet drive market for me. However, some people may be more than happy with the performance. Um, and, and in that case, then this represents really great value for money. Reliability has been good overall. Um, I haven't, ex I've experienced a couple of tiny little glitches over the two and a half months. Um, nothing short of a case of, of turning the wheelbase on and off to reset it um, or, or making a adjustment in the uh, software. But as in terms of serious mechanical breakages um, or other problems that have been experienced by much larger manufacturers in the uh, sim racing community, I think the package is very good and very reliable. Obviously, I did have some issues in the beginning, but these were easily overcome. And I think, um, you know, they're to be expected. I mean, how many things do we buy nowadays in, in this day and age that break down, including new cars and computer equipment? So um, as long as those problems can be easily overcome and there's good feedback and good support from a community behind the product, then I think that's uh, that's not a problem at all. So yeah, overall, seven and a half out of 10. Um, I like the wheelbase unit. I will be keeping it for a while, but I'm also starting to look for the next upgrade. Anyway, if you like what we're doing, um, please do give us a, a like and subscribe on the video. Feel free to comment down below if you've got any comments. Maybe you own a Symagic M10 and GD1 and you want to give us um, your feedback as well from your experience, leave a comment down below. Um, so we can have a look and I'll, I'll sure join into that conversation. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, you can follow us also on Instagram and Facebook. We're at Smoke and Steel Garage on Instagram and Facebook. Also got a Twitch uh, channel opened up and I will be starting to do some live streaming soon. So thanks for watching. Take care, guys. See you all soon. Cheers.